Today we're going to go over basic provisioning on the new 3PAR store serve management console. Um, the first thing I should describe is the installation process. Uh, I have a previous video of how to install uh, the SSMC on a uh, Red Hat OS and a Windows server. And by design, HP wants you to install the SSMC like local to your 3PAR and get them connected. Uh, and then you just web in, which is kind of nice because you, as you can tell, I'm on a Mac, so um, I don't have to worry about installing an application here. I could just launch my web browser and get connected directly to uh, the SSMC and do my provisioning uh, from there. Um, you can also install it on a Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 workstation. So if that's what your laptop is, then you can install it there. And then just fire up your web browser and add your three PARs to that and go on and provision from there. But because I'm on a Mac, what I did was I just installed a little VM uh, right here that's um, running in uh, Oracle's VirtualBox. And it actually runs the SSMC. And I have the network in bridge mode so that I can access it uh, from my Mac. And so that's how we're going to be doing this today. Um, so it's possible if you're on a Mac and you want to run it locally, you can do that. And if you've never heard of Oracle's virtual box, I'll leave a link to it in the, um, uh, in the description of the video. So you'll get to see, um, you'll get more information on that tool. It is free and allows you to put uh, multiple little VMs if you want to do like a little lab or whatever on your Mac, uh, on your Windows box, or uh, even Linux, it's supported there as well. Okay, so let's just uh, jump into uh, some provisioning here. And um, what I will say is that uh, they're still trying and they're still trying to develop the tool, so the SSMC isn't really ready for prime time. Uh, there's a lot of features that are currently missing out of it. Uh, if you want to configure adaptive optimization, you want to do any tuning, uh, like TuneSys or uh, uh, moving a volume from one CPG to another, those are you know, common actions that are not currently supported. Uh, if you do anything with domains, uh, that's also not supported yet. Um, so it's still, you know, it's still maturing. The product just came out a few months ago, so we'll see how it continues to progress. But one thing that's definitely uh, nice is this new piano interface. I've started to really like the layout of it um, and the look and feel of it. It's definitely a lot nicer than the old uh, Java uh, GUI that they had. So let's take a look at what, what, what our menu options are. Um, obviously, we have our general settings, um, and then we have block persona. Uh, they call that uh, persona just, I don't know, but it's a block provisioning. Right, so if you want to do uh, set your common provisioning groups, uh, which should really be called common provisioning policies, um, but you can set your CPGs, your virtual volumes, your host host sets. We'll go through all this. Uh, file persona as well. Everything's on the same operating system, so um, you can uh, create uh, file shares um, directly on uh, your three parts. Completely integrated, so it's not like two separate pieces. Uh, I do not have any three-part systems available to me with the new Converge controller to do file persona, but as soon as you know we get one of those, and I'll uh, I'll do a quick demo on that um, storage systems. So you know uh, the physical drives, enclosures, etc. Here's System Reporter. There are some templates. I'll show you how to access those. Uh, remote copy configuration. This really just shows you the configuration in the RC groups, but you can't actually configure remote copy from this yet. And of course, if you want to configure LDAP or anything, um, user accounts, you can do that here. All right, so let's just jump into uh, step one, it's, uh, basic provisioning. We're going to create a, a common provisioning group, or maybe we want to look at the available common provisioning groups. And so here's all my CPGs on the system, and you can see I've got all systems selected here, but I could also pick which box I want to look at. So let's say um, 64. And that switches to all the CPGs that are related to uh, 64. And we can um, take a look at uh, all the settings and, and do a map view. We'll get to all that in just a moment. But let's create a CPG. All right. And we're going to do, uh, sure, um, on fast class, let's select this to RAID 5. Uh, but you'll notice there's no other options here. Uh, you have to select the advanced options up here if you want to do any CPG tuning. I'm just going to accept the defaults for this. 
You'll also notice this warning, RAID 6 is uh, strongly recommended for high capacity drives. Now this is something that uh, HP kind of uh, forced on users for a good reason in my opinion. Uh, when you were provisioning nearline drives because they were getting so large, two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte, I hear rumors of like a six terabyte drive. That's a lot of data to rebuild if you were uh, trying to rebuild from a drive failure, even for the three par with its many to many uh, sparing algorithms. Um, so as even the FC drives get larger, um, HP is just recommending RAID 6. Uh, you can do RAID 5, no big deal, we're gonna do that here. Um, but just to increase the level of data protection. Now, personally, if I've got 1.92 SSD drives in my all flash array, I provision RAID 6. And there's three optimal levels of RAID 6 for the three par, and that's um, uh, 4 plus 2, 8 plus 2, and 14 plus 2. Um, they perform a little bit better due to um, being a true RAID 6 uh, relationship or algorithm based on uh, uh, the agreement that uh, HP has in place with IBM to actually use the RAID 6 technology. Anyway, so skipping that uh, BS for a second, um, when you have the larger 1.92 SSD drives, yes, they're fast and rebuild time is a fraction, but typically you don't have a lot of them, right? You're not, you're not going to have like 300 uh, SSD drives in your frame. Um, well, you could. I don't know. I don't. But let's say you've got you know just one chassis with 24 or you know a couple of chassis, 48, 32, whatever SSD drives, and they're all 1.92s. I've got uh, all of my business on that drive, whether it's uh, running VDIs or databases. I will actually configure that RAID 6 because the the penalty, the additional write penalty on an SSD drive is a fraction of what it would be on anything else. Um, and I want that extra bit of data protection as well. And some other vendors you know, force you into that anyway. Um, I like RAID 6 on larger SSD drives, but I also like the flexibility of, of choosing which workloads go on that RAID 6 and which workloads go on RAID 5. And you know, I'm, I'm just saying larger drives, I like RAID 6. If, um, if you want to go with RAID 5, by all means. Or RAID 10, that's even, that's even better, full mirror, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's move along here. Uh, I got my CPG name, I picked out my system. Here's my type, let's go ahead and create that. We'll see the CPG. Now this is kind of cool up here, you get to see your activity. So we're creating a CPG, and if I actually want to see, you know, see, <clears throat> pardon me, see a little green dot, that means that it actually worked, right? So I can pull this menu over and we can see that here's uh, the create CPG activity. I can select it and we can see the details of it right there, all right? So um, let's go back to CPGs, and here's my CPG that I just created. And now I want to create a virtual volume. I can go to Actions and say Create. Um, nope, that's going to take me to, pardon me, that's going to take me back because I was creating a CPG. All right, so I want to go to uh, Virtual Volumes, and we'll create a virtual volume. And we'll give it a 3PJ VV3. I think that one is fine. I can select, uh, if I had SSD here, uh, thinly deduped or thin provisioning, we'll say thin provisioned uh, 500. Oh, wait. Sorry. CPG down arrow. Scroll to my CPG that I created. There it is. And now here's size. Okay. Now, one thing that I, I, I'm kind of going back and forth on is you, there's no other options here until I hit advanced options. Um, so let's select that. But what you're going to see is the CPG that I've allocated here, it's automatically going to fill that into my copy space, which I'm not really a fan of. So when I select that, uh, advanced options, additional options, here we go. So we can see that um, my copy space has already been allocated to my FC tier. I would rather that be nothing. Um, mainly because if I accidentally take a snapshot or set up a schedule of snapshots, um, just because I know that there's copy space and I can do it, 
then I'm going to end up filling my FC tier. So I, I'm going back and forth on whether or not that should be an option, but it's definitely something to check because sometimes I want to put it in near line. And if I'm running remote copy, I might actually want my snapshots to be in a fast tier because I'm taking a snapshot and replicating from that tier if it's async, right? So um, there's a use case for both, but I would rather just it be a default of empty and it make me um, put in copy space. Um, okay, here's the policies. We don't really need to worry about any of that. Okay, so now I can add my export too, whether I'm exporting it to a host or I'm exporting it to a host set. And I like these search bars that keep coming up because I can just type in like DL3, oops, DL380, and it'll pull up every host I have in the system that starts with DL380. So we'll select that one. And then it's going to add it and export it to that host. So what we're doing is we're creating a volume, assigning it to this CPG, and exporting to that host all at once. Um, and you can see that it's creating the volume here. Here's the activity window. I still got that pulled up. And we'll see the volume and everything pop in over here with its association to its host. Here's the volume. I select that. We can see one host here. So we know that it's uh, exported to the host already. I can select that and here's the, the host and the volumes that are currently exported to that host. All right, so we created the CPG, we created a volume and then we exported that volume to the host. Again, just basic stuff. Okay, so let's jump over to System Reporter. Um, as you can see, there's nothing in System Reporter. I've got one report that I ran earlier, so that's there, but there's just nothing here. Um, what's kind of nice is when I ran the report, it automatically saved it in my browser. Uh, so I, the report is still here, which is kind of nice. But let's create a new report on this system. Um, and then here's the report template. And when I, when I select it, you can see here's all these uh, templates they have uh, predefined, which is nice. So if I went to see, you know, this last one was physical capacity, right? So I did that one. If I want to see physical drive performance statistics, let's run that one now. Uh, I'm just going to accept all the defaults here. Um, I like IOs, so let's deselect bandwidth because I'm concerned about IOs and service time. Uh, time interval, yeah, you can specify the time interval. We can say one week, let's go back to three months. And actually, it might be too far. Let's do a month. All right, create that. There we go. So that's pretty uh, pretty cool graphing. Uh, I do like the little, uh, I think it's called a sprite, where you can kind of point over something and get these little active windows so you can see what the ranges are. One thing I'm uh, not real excited about is I, I don't think I can export any of this yet. Uh, it'd be nice if I could get the actual numbers um, in, a, in like a table view, and it's just not available yet, but I, I get a nice little chart reading here. Okay, so uh, there are some system reporter functions, but it's still limited. Um, um, I'm sure it's a priority to get that done. We all like the system reporter tool. Okay, so let's go back to, um, I wanted to show you, let's see, what do I want to show you? I want to show you, um, let's go back to that virtual volume for a second. All right, so here I'm on VV3, and you see this little squiggle bar? right here this is a map view which is pretty awesome so let's select that and this is going to show because i'm on the volume it's going to select the volume and that volume's relationship to the three par so here's my three par and then from the three par it goes to the cpg from the cpg to the volume this volume's exported to the host All right if i select this volume now we've got this volume to this host and this volume, and oh look, it's not so exported to a host. If I go here, I don't even know what this is, we can see that it's two, two parts to this uh, volume, which is telling me that if it's in two groups, then chances are this is part of AO, right? Because AO has associated it with these two volumes. I can't provision or even see AO but this is a great indicator, and I'm really excited by this because later on, we're going to be able to see our hosts that have these volumes, the volumes and all the CPGs that they're related to. 
uh, in an AO configuration, which is pretty slick. All right, so let's go back to this host and let's do a, a sorry, system, and we'll do a system view. And here we can see all four nodes in the system, uh, all the ports, the disk ports and host ports in the system, all the drive enclosures, and then of course all the physical disks. So the map view is, is pretty awesome. I think there's a really good way to, um, to leverage this tool once I get a little bit more experience on it, like by picking you know, the ports and I can see different, different ports. If we go to like RC ports, you know, I can see the relationship of this RC port, um, this disk, you know, so the, the node in the system. So I, there's a lot of good things um, about all this that I just need a little bit more experience on before we can review it but I just wanted to kind of give you this uh, overview of the, the map view. Alright, so there we are. It's, it's kind of um, uh, basic but again you know the tools still being developed and I just want to give you a little bit of exposure um, to, uh, to using it. I do like the dashboard again that you see here. We can see that our capacity efficiency. Now this is, o this is overall compaction because I don't have any dedupe. So this is based on thin technology and, and doesn't include any dedupe today. If I had an um, array that I was also doing uh, deduplication on, then you would see another number that would say like overall uh, dedupe, something like that. Um, Okay, so anyway, hopefully this was a good overview for everybody and um, uh, look forward to uh, more videos to come. Thanks.